All right, guys, it's Joe here with Dixie Doggers. We uh, we were delivering a load of quail and uh, out here to San Antonio, and we ran across this old boy over here in Orange, Texas. Y'all might know him as Mr. Jake Lacano. Uh, stopped in to say hello. We figured, hey, why not talk a little bit, you know, since we're so shy and stuff. So <laughs> I, I asked Jake a little bit on the history of some of the stuff about the hog baying, you know, because like I said, I've been doing it for for quite a few years, but I don't know all the the backstories of it. Jake, tell us a little rundown on on how things were and how things are. Well, uh, coming up in in, in hog baying, uh, you know, it, when I first started in, in the late nineties, there was a hog baying every weekend. You could literally, within driving distance of right here, two hours in any direction, you could go to a monthly event. There was at least three a month, and then occasionally there would be certain special events, big events, like the Sheriff Posse uh, of Shelby County would have one. There'd be one in Hardin County. That's crazy. You know, you know, so so you had the three guaranteed every month, plus one or two pop up here and there, and then all the way back to, let's say, to 2012 at Uncle Earl's, we're down to, there's... I think there's a bay in at Triple R, Mark Bannisters, and Earls were really the only three places you could go bay your dogs. And it was hard to find a class that would have more than 20 entries in it. You know, like say like the one dog, you know, it, it wouldn't have much. Like you were saying the first time you went to Hickory Cross and it wasn't as big as it, it had been in the past. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was dying. It, I, I don't want to say dying out, but it was, it was getting slim. Yeah, you it, know? It, it, it was going to a place where, uh, I didn't like it. It needed to be revived. And I uh, read the fresh air. I never dreamed I would put on a hog band. GT's, there's a girlfriend down there that's uh, in heat. And he's trying to talk one of us. Yeah, he's, go. he's trying to get me. It, for another check, another handshake or two, I let him out. But that, <laughs> that's Clyde's litter mate brother. He's not as good as Clyde, but he sure is pretty. Yeah. But uh, but I, I never dreamed I'd put on a hog band. But I said, man, I got to do something. Or like we're not gonna have anything. Well, 2013 we started, and uh, ended up. This is what we were saying. You know, they got us to think about doing this. Uh, it went from not only me not having a. I never dreamed I'd have a hog band, but I never dreamed it would have taken off like it did. See, back in them days, like people that have started in the last five, six, eight years, they know me as Jake, the guy that puts on hog bands. People that have known me since the late 90s, that was Jake, the guy that helped everybody. I had a good name, and that's why yeah. it, it, it was like me putting on a hog band was kind of a, a phenomenon because I wasn't I was I was a neutral party. Yeah, everybody liked me, and I had a really good name, and and, and it was a hit that I never thought it would ever be. And uh, then people started mentioning like Uncle Earl's, and I was like, I'm you know like for one putting on the biggest hog band ever was a pipe dream. Well, it mm -hmm. wasn't even a dream; it wasn't even a goal. Just I wanted to have something to keep some keep the stir up and. And, and have for black people to go. And then it got to where the people that award the contract for Uncle Earl's called me. Oh, yeah. And uh, let's say, say 2012, I want to say that was, that was one of the years. I went on a run where I'd got second, first, and first in the two dog. I had a three year run there where we won it two years in a row and got second the year before. Okay. And uh, I want to say it was 2012. It didn't, didn't even break 100 in the two dog. And that's the biggest hog band in the world. That'll tell you the spot we were in. That'll tell you the motivation for where we are now. Yeah, that's a, it's a big it's a big difference now. Yeah, now we'll have three. even at a smaller bay yeah. compared yeah. to Earl's. Yeah, there's now, now it's nothing to have a hundred in, oh, in a regular bay. Yeah, in the two dog, and uh, and, and to tell you the type of impact that it had, there was a couple years at the beginning where my Memorial Day show where we we do a benefit for someone close to the sport. Yes. It's in a bind, their house burned. Uh, they, they may be going through cancer treatments. Their child may be sick. That's some of all, some of their, or their house was destroyed by a tornado or something. That's all people that we've done benefits yeah. for. Uh, there, that, that stuff happens to, to people yeah. every day, and y'all keep people like that. Matter of fact, my niece, Caitlin, she has stage four cancer right now, his daughter, and uh, she's got a surgery coming up, going to New York to do it. Hey, it's in yeah. God's hands. He's going to take care of it. It's like he's already working. Yeah, he's on a doctor. Y'all keep York. praying. Yeah. yeah. Y'all just keep praying for him. So, but the, 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 especially for kids in yeah. places like that, man. They she's got just, it down she's to 18. A, they, so. got it, they got it down to an R. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, 
like that Memorial Day show was always the biggest we would do. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of years, I want to say it was like 14 and 16, maybe the, the Memorial Day show. And it may have been 13 and mm -hmm. 15. I can't remember, but there was, I remember there was a gap in between, but my Memorial Day show had more entries than Uncle Earl's did. Then as our deal gained steam, it started to pick up across the country. Yeah. If you remember one year, there was uh in Georgia there was so many bands. I want to say it was eighteen or nineteen. Eighteen. I uh, think it 20, was twenty eighteen. There was maybe seventeen and eighteen so in that area, like you said. There, there was there was a lot. There was eight or nine different pins that had multiple events. Yes. I think it added up to sixteen or seventeen mm -hmm. events. And so that George, the state of Georgia alone had seventeen events. Yes. In one annual one in an annual span, seventeen events. And that'll tell you how what what this spurred, like the interest that it that it spurred, and uh, and it's still growing. That now, oh yeah, you know, as at, you know, as it grows, there's certain things that you don't, there's certain problems that you don't know you're even going to run into. And as you get to them and you start to face them, and then they're not bad problems; they're just growing pain yeah, kind of problems. Got to work them out. And uh, and now as we refine it more and more, it starts to get more and more commercialized to where. Mm -hmm. bigger companies on in. It's not Jake and Joey's money making it go. Exactly. You know, and I say Jake and Joey like that's because we're the only ones here. No, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's Ricky Campbell's money. It's, it's Randy's uh, money. Uh, it's, it, it's Lynn Roberts. It's, yeah, it's Lynn Robertson's money. It's those guys. Like it's not all our money. Like th that 70% payout. It's that's 70% of our money is what make, well now, now, if Show you've got a sponsor, yeah, it's their money that's paying out. It's, pay, it's, it's paying it's, the way. Yeah. yeah, like now there's there's around eighteen grand that Showtime puts up annually. Now I realize not all of that's cash. Some of it is a dog trailer. Some of it is a pallet of dog. It's still trailer. a lot. Yeah, that's a lot though. Yeah. But I mean, like PBR, those guys don't win a quarter million or a million dollars off of their entry fee. Yeah, so for like one, they pay no entry fee. Exactly. And when JB Mooney wins a million dollars, he's not winning. Uh, you, you know, everybody uh, else. He's not winning him. Adriano's million dollars. No, you know what I mean. Like exactly. you come to the band, you you win two grand. It, you're winning yeah, two grand yeah, for Randy to yeah, 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 I'm getting Randy's money all yeah. the time, baby. But 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 like, used to it, Randy. When JB Money <laughs> comes and win, comes and win, JB Mooney comes and wins a million dollars. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 not uh, it's sponsored. Money. It's not Silvano Alves's money. It's, 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 money. it's Ford Motor Company's That's money. Right. And uh, and those companies they they want to do this. Because it gives them exposure as well. Yep. You and, know, they, they got a way to, to move their money around and keep their name out there. Yeah, and they're selling to their to their market. Yes. And uh, especially at a, at a place like Uncle Earl's, um, the, the population of the city of Earl's is 5,000 people. The week of Uncle Earl's, there'll be 15,000 people cross through the fairgrounds. We triple the population of the city. Of the whole city. All right, and to put it into perspective... The taxable income of the month of March in the city of Winfield is greater than the other 11 months combined. Just the one month. Just that one month. So one month of having a And, and you bank. can almost say one week. Yeah. Yeah, I realize that I'm coming and going for most of that month, and, and that will help a little bit. But, yeah. but uh, like, the actual people there, really, one week will outweigh the other 50. I'm glad you brought one. that up. Honestly, at that, because states like Alabama, where, where we live at, you know, we can't do that. And I think that if they could see that, that, hey, this, you know, this helps way more than just a, some country boys and girls out there with dogs yeah. barking at pigs in a pen. That's right. Th this brings revenue. And, and, and a small town and a smaller community can benefit from it greatly. Yeah. And, and, and it's. It, the, the the giving or, or not said of the giving, but the gains are like reciprocal. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, when I come to town and I do good, and this is just me. This ain't counting the other people involved. But like I come to town, and I do good. There's 4-H gets donations. Yeah. You, you know the, uh, the 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 city police. I, I donated this year to a deal called Cops and Kids. Uh, you know, you know stuff like that. Every it helps the entire community with not 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 just actually revenue, but with charitable type with, stuff too. With everything, it's all yeah. it's all around. It's a good thing. And, uh, you, you know, the, the, like the Houston rodeo, I know this, this is app, kind of apples to oranges, but the Houston rodeo, a billion dollar deal doesn't have the impact on the Houston economy 
per capita, like Uncle Earl's like does, Uncle Earl's does to win and win for you. You're talking about tripling the size of the city. Yeah. The city almost doesn't realize in, the, in its infrastructure mm -hmm. as a whole, the city almost doesn't realize the rodeo. Yeah. And, and it's a billion dollar revenue. That's, that's, that's crazy. My cat must be, oh, it's my wife. I'm fixing the cat must be walking well, there, the yard. Yeah, there's the, the cat's over there by the truck, too. Oh, but, like but you were saying, you know, <laughs> and you know, the thing, like, like you're talking about the exposure and the, and the way that, you know, that people are, are opening up. We're, a lot of us guys are opening ourselves up and we're trying to do it the right way. We, you know, like if you post videos or you put pictures and stuff, you know, just make sure that you, you check everything that you post and you put up, you know. But yeah, this 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 sport, you know, it's it's a contact sport. Yeah. But there's I mean I I, I at your band I've never seen any injuries at all. Yeah. We we do it's, it's just it's just like at work, you know, your 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 employer does, puts things in place to mitigate yes. and make it it mitigate injuries and make it as safe as they can and that's what we do. And if in, in the next, it, and it's a moving target, say a month from now, yeah. we run into an issue that where a dog was injured, guess what, we're going to fix it. That's why in over a nine, ten year span, we've we've almost eliminated injuries. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I see the world champion Gator pop his hamstring in the pen. The vet down at the end of the road fixed him up by the, by, by the next bay. Yeah, by the next bay. Yeah, yeah, by the next bay, Gator was there. Matter of fact, Gator won the world championship the following year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, Mama, you got traffic fired up. So the safety, the safety of the sport is, I mean, it's, it's safe is what I'm saying. Yeah. So for people, if newcomers want to bring their dogs out and try them out, you know, bring them out. You know, for one second. Yeah. Chad, watch. You can leave. You can leave. Uh, you can leave, bro. Uh, you know, we're we'll saving uh, as we go. Yeah. Chop, chop. Yeah. If I had a water hose, if the water was on that screen, he'd shut up. Yeah. But, uh, we got the water hose. I don't mind. I didn't know what the water hose is. But normally when I'm off, like, I clean the water. Yeah. Obviously, I ain't got too many more. But uh, Nathan, his, a guy he goes to college with, his parents and his sister, they came to the show in Dallasville. These people have never done anything of this of this sort his mother and his sister they were so enthralled with it they literally stood behind brandy's booth they were the people that were standing over there for five hours and and just watched and they were amazed she said these are true athletes she said and, and like i said this is no persuasion from anybody she said well what's the difference in this and the pbr there's nothing. Yeah. The, the only difference is is what people are making. Yeah. And, and I, I've said this before, and, and I kind of need to go back to it because every every so many years you got a new generation of folks, new generation of fans, or a new mm -hmm. generation of critics for that matter. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, cowboys revere Trevor Brazil. Uh, the At Bauer boys, the, you know, uh, the Myers brothers. You know, stuff like they really revere these guys yep. and the athletes that they use in competition. They do not go pin cow. They do not go rope a wild bull on Trevor Brazil's roping horse. They do not pin cows on Joe Beaver's horse. Exactly. You cannot do anything in this world with a bulldog and horse. I don't know if you've ever rode a bulldog and horse, but it's no, like, I it, it's almost as loony as a barrel horse. Okay. It, I mean, it's almost completely <laughs> worthless, except for bulldog. Yeah. And and they revere these people, and of course I revere them too. I'm a cowboy myself. But uh, most of the critics of, say, quote-unquote, woods hunters, because everybody involved in hog band woods hunts also. Yeah, I, I haven't met uh, anybody that doesn't woods hunt. That goes to the competition. Goes to exactly. So what you run into, there's two kinds of people that are, quote-unquote, woods hunters. Yeah. They either can't compete, so it's sour grapes. They're jealous. I think it's a lot of it. Or they have no, they've never seen it, and they have no clue. Mm hmm they, but they're so quick to pass judgment. Yeah, and they'll pass judgment too quick. And voice their opinion and be like, hey, now, well, just come look at it first. Now, mm -hmm. having said that, an overwhelming majority are <laughs> intelligent. You know, 80% of people that woods have never been to a hog band, they think it's cool. Yeah. But you'll have that 20% that are just and that's out the ones left you're field. Hear. Yeah, and that's, yeah and, that, and that's the ones you hear about. But, uh, yeah, obviously the cat has made its way to the, to mm -hmm. the dog yard. But uh, but anyway, uh, 
you know, if, if we could if we could get that message out there, especially like, because there'll be some critics that see this. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and I mean, we we have to have. I, I want critics. I, I yeah. want. But if we, especially, and I, I want I want them to change, you know, especially coming from that angle, we get them to see this. Like, Trevor Brazil doesn't pin cows on his roping horse. You know what I mean? Uh, Randy Durrell don't go hog hunting with his competition dog. It's the exact same thing. I, I, I don't see how a lot of these guys don't understand. I don't see how they don't understand that. It's the same thing as saying, okay, you've got a hunting truck. you got a beat-up Toyota, dog box in the back, mud all over it, no problem. you got a brand-new Denali that you pay $1,500 a month for. And it's got 300 miles on it. Are you going to take that son of a bitch and run through a field chasing a pig with it every yeah. time? Yeah. Now, you might try it one time, and that's the same way like with yeah. goose. Yeah, take goose hunting. And that I'll go hunt. Okay, well, why would you take something that's producing that much money yeah. and, and, that, and, and, and siring these kind of puppies and uh, passing these genes on and take it and get him cut down by a boar hole yeah. in the woods? Because he's not getting cut down. In the you know the... The, 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 this is the short answer, and this is what I used to say before I made the spiel about the rodeo hands and stuff. But you know the difference between a woods dog and a competition dog? What's that? About $20,000. Yeah, yeah. It's the only difference. Yeah. It's the only difference. Uh, but uh, to say something funny that's a little off subject, when the orange rodeo is right on the other side of this hunting club, uh -huh. there's a highway about six miles over there, okay. and the orange rodeo is right over there. Jay Bird announces that. Well, they were going to do a deal to recognize Goose for the three-time world championship. Uh, so Randy, back, he's going to come here. Jay Bird and everybody's kind of staged up here. Ricky Campbell, we had Code Red. We had a few people, Snotty. We had a little party out there in the yard. Well, Randy backs his dogs up here, and Pat's here. And, uh, well, some people that had never seen Goose and Crow, he, he's going to get them out. And, and, well, Goose at his house runs loose. Mm -hmm. Well, Crow, you got to keep on a chain. So... Randy turns Goose loose, and uh, and everybody's looking at Goose and stuff. And well, Randy clicks Crow out. We caught Crow in the hunting club. Out there. <laughs> Crow said, yeah. "I gotta go, man. Yeah, I gotta go. He was on the trail." You know, I've heard so many people talk about about Goose, and you know, like I said, I went to go watch the dog. I I'm, I like it, but Crow. Everybody that talks about Goose, crowd favorite. That, that that's what they're like. He was more. He was like the people's champ. He's like, you know, yeah. he didn't bay the way Goose does. But he just he had no quit in him. I he think was it hard. Was 2019 maybe. Uh, we, we I started that pitch about uh, the between the road difference between rodeos and cowboys. Yeah. And and it caught a few people's eyes and and, and they they wanted to see it from that angle mm -hmm. kind of kind of deal. And they 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 all come to the fence and they all pick their favorites. You know, like well the two dogs that caught. The, the, the influx of woods hunters that came that year were rooster and crow. Their styles yeah. emulated what they would want their dogs to bay like in the woods. And, uh, you know, crow didn't get as close as he could. He got as close as he needed to, you know, if it meant right here, that's where he was or at. if it meant biting you on the butt or if it meant four foot back, that's what crow got. Yeah. And crow barked about once every four seconds. And everybody that hog hunted yeah. that was there, they loved that. Instead of the yeah, 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 yeah 90 yeah. barks a minute, like you bark. And uh, Crow just rope, rope, <laughs> rope. And was, like steady, and was steady as, as a rock. Never, you, you know, you never had to worry what Crow was. Crow was focused on the hog and wasn't wasting no energy. And just, he could have ran that hog all day long. Yeah, but he, he knew all yeah. I got to do is hold him here. And do you think? And, and, when I first started going to bands, when a dog would hold a hog in the middle of the pit, out there at Mark's pen, at Hickory Crossing, it's a big pen. When they take butthead and hold him dead still in the middle of that pen for a four minute bay all, I was like, man, he's just standing there. I didn't know all this stuff. Yeah. Now it's like, I, I'm not butthead. moving. I'm yeah. like, look at this dog. He made butthead stay watch there. Watch him stay minutes. there. Yeah. yeah. The whole point is for the hog not to be doing yeah. all that in stuff. Our, our scoring system isn't perfect, you know, because there's no way to really mm -hmm. take into account the hog. But at Hickory Crossing, with with the terrain there, mm -hmm. if you can make that hog go down the hill and set up, yeah, they they take that into account and your score, you know, because they know it's hard traveling down there, yeah, off that cliff and them rocks, exactly. running into trees. 
So the time I went, I didn't mind if the hog broke down. There. My, dog, my dogs were kind of flashy. Yeah. So if they went down there and then my, I, you know, the first time we went to Hickory Crossing, uh, I, at a certain point into the bay, and there was only three perfect scores. And uh, I was all three of them. And a couple, <laughs> and one of them for sure. What we had a mistake. That's Randy wasn't there. Wasn't it, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this this is back when he was just little Randy. Oh, okay, I got you. But uh, oh, anyway, uh, and Randy might even been one of them giving me a hard time because one of my runs had an obvious mistake. Mm. And uh, somebody asked one of the judges. He said, "Well, once you go down the hill and run through the woods and everything, you know, we take that into consideration." And we were probably halfway through the show, and we we were the only three tens, and it, it you know it yeah. kind of looked, and especially after that one, it looked bad. Like, oh, I see what they're doing here. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. you hear that from time to time from you know from people here and there. They're like, and I had a guy come up and ask me. He's like, you think there's there's favoritism in it? I said, to be honest with you, I said it's probably harder for them to yeah. judge this going on than anything else there is to be judged. I said they're well, doing the best that they can. I said, there's more than one. I said, if it was just one judge, you could say there might be favoritism. I don't know, but you got three that's looking at three different angles and, and, look, and they all watching the same dog and the same hog. I, it's about as even a playing field. We were newcomers and never been there. And I mean, here, here, we hit a lick. Here's a, you know, so. And here's a perspective to look at. Let's say, I hate to keep beating a dead horse, so I'm going to throw, throw another guy's name in the mix. Let's say. Ricky Campbell wins the one dog, mm -hmm. and there's 500 people. Well, 500 people have their opinion of who should have won. Yep. Okay. So let's say Ricky Campbell wins the one dog in January, and you win the one dog in May. Mm -hmm. Who do you think are going to be – which instance is going to have be more critics? The fact that the guy that always wins wins or the fact that you won? The fact the guy that always wins. Yeah, wins. when Ricky Campbell wins, I'm going to have a bunch of critics. Yeah, all right, right, that's oh so and so. He always does this. Yeah. When you win, you the new guy. Everybody's yeah. tickled pink. Yeah, they're like, look, he, yeah. he wants up. Hell how, yeah. How do you know that the favoritism wasn't for the new guy? If it was going to be a favoritism, like, yeah. well, let him win one. You know. Yeah. You know how it goes. People's going to have, like you said, there's there's 500 critics, a lot more than that, and everybody's got their own. Their own outlook and, on and, it. For the most part, though, and everybody's cool with it. It, yeah. it works, you know. It, there, there are certain truths, little things that I say uh, that, 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 that are just, uh, I don't know, like, like there's there's no, uh, what am I saying? There, there's no varying from this. There's no, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's absolute yeah, truth. It's, it's dead, Na, 99, stone. 99 percent of the people that come to the shows are good people. Mm -hmm. And and you'll never hear a peep out of it. I agree. We'll spend ninety nine percent of our time talking about the one no, percent of problem. <laughs> exactly, you're exactly right. Because like you said, the people that are that are giving donations to help somebody whose house burnt down. Yeah. Uh, the people that are running back and forth helping another guy run his dogs because he's there by himself. Um, you know, the, all the kids running around. Another another woman's watching these kids over here running around because you know their mom's yeah. busy doing something, and it, it's like a big family. You know what I'm saying? It's everybody like you but the one person that's been a, yeah. a jerk is that's who we're going that's gonna be the topic all the time. So on the on the judging part uh, on the hogs, there's there's a, a few things on that that you know I, I'm just now learning all the deductions and stuff. Can you tell some of the guys that that we can hopefully get to come to the to yeah. the bay and what what to if they were at home or in the woods looking at their dog bay, what to look for as a mistake? What what mistakes? All right. Uh, obviously, we've geared – this is not a made-up sport. We've geared this towards uh, how you would bay a hog in the woods. Now, there, I, this being a controlled environment, there are some things that aren't realistic. Can you catch every hog in the woods and stop and get a drink of water while you're doing it? Sure. You, you know, uh, just because you stop and got a drink of water – it don't mean that, that you don't still bay that hog, but the fi the judging criteria. Having said that, now the, the judging criteria is you can't look away. Can a woods dog look away? Sure, he can. Mm -hmm. But in the pen, you can't. You can never take your eyes off. That in the one dog, that's just as simple as looking out, smelling the ground, spinning out because you lose eye contact when you turn a three sixty, stuff like that. In the two dog, it gets a little more complicated because if you're cross, 
if you're crossing over with your head behind the other dog, that's still a lookout. See, I, I didn't know that at first. I yeah. had one on, I had one on a dog, and I was like, I don't know. And yeah. Charles Charles Kepps, when it told me, he said, "Well, it was just a bad cross." I was like, "Now, you know, now, now I know." Yeah. So. And 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 not to say that crossing over is a mistake, but taking your eyes off, the, the easiest way to explain it is just calling it a bad crossover. That's taking your eyes off. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, being too rough. Obviously, in the woods, if the dog's always in the hog's face, biting him, making him run, you'll never you'll be running all day. You'll never bay yeah. that hog. It's gonna break you. Same thing in the bay pen. You can't be too rough. Third, probably the most overlooked, but the most important, stopping the hog. Uh, in the woods, there's probably a little more uh, ways of doing it because there's more terrain to cover. Like there's 3,000 acres right there. You can outrun that hog and never put your mouth on him and make him stop without ever touching him. But in the bay pen, the most, the easiest, most efficient way is to bite him and set him down. Because in two minutes, you're not hardly going to outrun a hog in two minutes. Yeah, exactly. So you, you got to put your mouth on him and make him stop, make him pay attention. And that's for a certain amount of time, the, the bite, the yeah, grab. Yeah, yes. You can't bite and hold. You just you bump him, set him down, and as uh, long as he stopped and bayed, otherwise you get to dot, you get deducted. Number four, you have to bark at least once every four seconds. And now, now some things people say, like in the woods, my dog can look out. My dog can bark once every 30 seconds. In the pen, you need to bark once every five seconds. Uh, if you're not, you're going to be deducted. Uh, also, you need to be within five foot of the hog. Uh, so if, if you're five foot back, you're good. If you're six foot back, you're getting a deduction. You need to be in there controlling it. Uh, and, and for it, some people might even say, uh, you know, I don't mind if my dog bays further back in the woods. Uh, I, I Myself, I don't either. That dog right there, mm -hmm. he's going to bay a little farther back when he knows he can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Like if he knows he's in a boar hog's face uh, in, in, a, in a thicket. And, and for instance, like and that's in the woods. Yeah. And, and plus he knows. Yeah. Put him in the bay pen and watch him get closer than five that's foot. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. he's got enough sense. He's not a bad bay pen dog. Yeah. I've never won any money with him, but I've got close. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not scared to put him in the pro right now. Like when I go to South Texas, he gets in it. And he's my hog dog. That's what I'm saying. That, yeah. that, that's what I was getting at. That's in the woods. That, and, that and, dog can. And you so, go do that in the woods and you still run him in a one dog pro. We don't cross paths with but a handful of people that have that go to bay pens that have hunted with him. Mm -hmm. But like Pat Lewing, Randy Durrell, mm -hmm. ask them if that's a hog dog. Yeah, yeah. You dead gum right. I can bet you that either one of them I've, 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 I've that, heard that, that's here. the best hog dog they've hunted with this year. I know it's only January, but that's the best one. <laughs> yeah. He ain't the best I've ever seen, but he's the best one I got. There you go. But uh and, and you know, I'll put him in a competition too. But that, those five things, you, you, you need to be looking at the hog at all times. You don't need to break the bay. You need to stop him if he moves. <laughs> Are you throwing rocks at my puppy? Are you throwing them at the cat? Oh. But anyway, uh, you need to stop the hog if he moves. You, you got to bark. You got to be within five foot of the hog. That's that's the judging criteria. There you go. And uh, it, it's, it, you know, some people have a, a pamphlet, a 20-page review of what the rules are it's it's you got to have a degree you, know, you couldn't even train a man yeah. judge when you got that it's these five that, things. yeah that's it's, the, it is that simple exactly these five things are what we judging on and uh you you know i've seen organizations and 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 private pens open up to where they wanted to put their rules in play and all this mm -hmm. and and a man like say a man come off the street uh, wanted to judge, he'd have to study that for six months to understand it. Yeah, the, I mean, I just explained that to you in five minutes. Yeah, and and the average person could watch a good dog work, yep. and then watch a, a green dog work, and say, okay, well, that's a mistake, and that's a mistake. That's so what I said for guys that, that that have never been to the bay pen, you woods hunt. You know, if make sure you check all your state laws and stuff. If you're allowed to have a hog and you can work your dog, go out there. Put him in there and see what he will do as far as the structure that Jake had just said. And, and, and you know, time him two minutes and see how he bays, see how many mistakes he'd make. And now keep in mind that's a different type type of hog than what they're running. And, and when we're done recording, I'll go over there and show you how, my hogs and how I start puppies and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and matter of fact, we might even take a little intermission and I'll get two little I got two little six month olds mm -hmm. that I got a good puppy trainer and I might even Talk through what what we're what we're doing, and have, we can put that on the podcast. Put a little two minute run on it, and uh, 
and I'll tell you, you know, they're out of people's dogs that you know, so right. that'll that'll go good to the story too. Yeah, that's real good. So, but like I said, that that was the you know, we went over how you started it, what you done with it, rules, regulations. The I think the only thing now, where you going with it? Uh, what's, what's next? Well, uh, I think we have touched on what what's next uh, a little bit. Yeah, we've been we've been. Uh, what what's next is. We, we, you know, the, the amount of weight we're moving when you're getting thousands of people to an event, we won't, you know, people can benefit from that big companies and stuff like that. Yes. And, uh, eventually what we want is their money in play, not all mm -hmm. our money. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I'm bringing, uh, when I'm tripling the size of the city, I don't want to have to front the whole package. Yeah. You know, when, I, I, especially, I especially when there's a market there that benefit other people. Sure. You know. And, uh, and, and, and that's the direction we're going and we're working. Like I've been, I've been where I'm working nights today and I woke up at normal time trying to get that going yeah. and see this sucker keeps going off. Oh, I know. That's yeah, what it's been, about. That's what it's about. Time, so and, and that's why I said when, when you said, Hey, y'all swing by, I was like, I told Joe, I was like, I said, man, we, we need to get back toward the house. I was like, but we're already right here too. I said, I don't know how quick I'm going to be able to get any more of your time. You know, yeah. time is valuable. Yep. And, and, uh, and people don't realize how much time goes into what you're doing. Yeah. You yeah. and everybody right, else right involved. now. Right now, I'll tell you, uh, it don't stop now. For Uncle Earl's, it. Like, I've already started. Yes. And it's in March. The, yeah. March 21st. Well, we pretty much, yeah, it's 21st through the 27th. So. We pretty much prepare mm -hmm. for Uncle Earl's year round, but there's certain things that you can't do until it's showtime. And now, like you just sleep when you can, mm -hmm. and uh, and and do it you, and get and get with it the rest of the time. There you go. You know, um, because it, there, there's certain stuff that, that that there's just not enough time in the day to get done. I got you. And, uh, but uh, I think the one thing we didn't cover you what started uh, the conversation on where the bay fans come from was mm -hmm. was the payouts. Yeah, that like, that's like that, the payouts that's weren't right. structured like, like this until not mm -hmm. long after 2013. You know, one of my biggest sales pitches was the payout. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had a, there was a bay in in 2002 that paid out $29,000 in Newton, Texas. It was a benefit for a, a man that had passed away. And uh, they changed the format up a little bit and up the entry fees and guaranteed so much money. Well, the money they guaranteed, it tripled, it went, tripled that, mm -hmm. but it was like 29 grand. And to that point, the largest payout ever, Reggie Little had had a band that paid out twenty seven thousand. Well, the Newton band came along and paid out twenty nine, and that was just an annual deal. And I said, "Well, I can structure mine like that, and have a kind of a semi annual thing." Yeah. Well, now, still to this day, no one's ever touched the twenty seven thousand, except for what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and our average payout is almost double what the next largest ever was. Wow. And now the payout at Earl's is up over sixty grand. Sixty um, grand is a lot of money. That's if, a, that's a year's year's yeah, pay. If you take out or if you add to, like the trailer, I know that's not cash. Yeah, but that's but, but the added money, the trailer, and the normal payout for the October Bay was seventy thousand dollars. Good lord, that's that, and that wasn't Uncle Earl's back in the day. You know, coming up from 1995, mm -hmm. no hog band was half the size of Uncle Earl's. Now, at an October show in Downsville, Louisiana, it paid out $70,000. Wow. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's, and like you said, we're you know, keeping the payouts like that and getting them that big and bigger yeah. and being able to do it by being funded yeah. instead of, being self yes yes it, it would be it's not our phenomenal money. yeah now when you show up and and you win twenty thousand dollars it's not your buddy's twenty thousand exactly. dollars that's, that's what i'm want. saying that yeah. and that's the direction that we're trying to go guys that's that like randy Darrell puts the tiktok videos up of goose and stuff and i know some guys they they give him a little flack about it and stuff but you know he's he's promoting the sport and he's doing it he's doing it in his way which might not be the same way that you want to do it so you promote the sport in the way that you want to do it. Just promote it. Yeah. Just promote it, but promote keep, it in a good way. And, and, get, and get it out there in front of people that otherwise wouldn't be able to see. Yes. If it wasn't for TikTok, there's a ton of people. Well, I say TikTok, social media mm -hmm. in general. They wouldn't know nothing about it. And, and, and this is another thing that's helped me. Like say I had come along and been in this situation, the situation that I explained in the beginning mm -hmm. in 1995, where I had to go to the post office 
and I, where the hog bands used to have like a mailing list. Yeah. Like we had these 200 names and we send them a flyer in the mail every month. Yeah. If we were been in that day and age, oh my it would not be the phenomenon that no, it is. There's but no I way. come up right in the right time where the social media and, uh, and, and the social media platform, and I've reached people that I, all right, from, from a week of advertising on social media, mm -hmm. people from Washington State, yeah, Canada, South Florida, Southern California, oh, yeah. showed up to my first band. That's crazy. There was a man, a 70-something-year-old man that worked for a dog food company that had never been to a hog band, drove from Alma, Georgia, yeah. did not even tell me he was coming, and gave us some dog food to give away called Showtime because of social media. What a blessing. Now look at what it is. What a blessing. I mean, Showtime is, you know, it's it, it's one of the biggest deals as far as dog food, yes. especially in the hog hunting sport. There's a, a man in, named in the base sport. A man sure. named Moose Jowers. And luckily I had people there from Waycross, Georgia that knew him. But he drove nine hundred miles to see if I would let him give his dog food away at my shows. He didn't even know what hog band was, but he's seen the traffic that we had yeah. on the internet and he said, uh, you know, I bet we can we can give some dog food away there and it'll really be a hit. Yeah. And like you're talking about the social media stuff, man, it's you reach so many people so far and wide. Like uh, we recorded an episode the other night and and I had the list of where people were listening. You know, all these different countries, hundreds and hundreds of cities. It's like these people are listening to us talk about this. How, how great is it? It's, yeah. it's awesome. I mean, and, and I'll tell you another. We're we're only holding ourselves back with with just promote, us with promoting products like such like dog food's the easiest one because it's probably the one we've had the most impact on. Mm -hmm. But uh, in twenty fifteen or sixteen, I think is when we made the deal with Showtime, like it is now, and uh, they sold zero bags of dog food in the state of Texas. And they sold about an eighteen wheeler load a month in Louisiana. <laughs> now they sell an eighteen wheeler load or two a week in Louisiana, and an eighteen wheeler load a week in Texas, just off of hog band. Just off of hog band. See, it's just it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. So, and, and other companies potentially could have the, for instance, Gorman and Dog Truck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorman hog hunting's a bad word. You ain't getting through to them. But if I could get through to dog truck, that's the next, that's, that's the next uh, frontier. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. If you could get through to them, that's a whole another platform. Yeah. That that would really. And, and then and there, there's three quarters of the people listening that know, what's dog truck. Yeah. That's Everybody why likes that's why it'll work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because exactly. they don't even know what it is. Right, you gotta get you gotta get it out there, and like you said, you gotta get your foot in the door. You gotta get the right people. John heard, talking. John heard dog truck. He thinks we're going hunting. Yeah, he's ready to go. <laughs> so, but like I said, folks, we uh, we thought we'd just stop and talk with Jake for a little bit. He stopped through the right side of Texas. Yeah, literally. Sure did. That's what it did. It's so. the southeast corner. Yeah. So, is there anything you want to add to this? We're probably going to put a few clips in and stuff at the end of this video. So, you know, just don't cut it off just yet. So, uh, not really. I think we touched on on uh, what's good, you know, because. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you can't cover everything in a day. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have. This was just thrown out too. We, we just decided to do this. We're right going to have ample opportunities. And there's a lot of things that I'd, I'd like to talk about in the future and at future events. And plus, this might even bring up some questions. People start listening. All right, mm -hmm. well, how did this happen? Or how did this fit into this uh, chronological order or whatever? Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this. And, and then we'll elaborate from there. There you go. Tell them how to contact you. If anybody yeah, needs to contact uh, you. Well, uh, hogband.com. Uh, is my website, jake at hogband.com is my email. 409-673-2382 is my phone number. Uh, I have a Facebook group called hogband.com. Obviously, you can message me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and uh, Uncle Earl's Hog Dog Trials Incorporated is a page on the internet, and we share uh, news and live videos and stuff like that on there. So if you need and, to know uh, anything, just hit him up on any of those. And a lot of people don't know... Like I seen the last uh, Dixie Doggers episode had Randy Durrell in it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know where Randy came from. Well, the next episode, we can tell you the story about how we found him out in the marsh 
being raised by wild coyotes. All right. And we've refined him into the man that he is today. Well, y'all doing a hell of a job. Oh, right? hell yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's the kind of thing we do around here. <laughs> well, Jake, man, we appreciate it, bud. Yeah, I appreciate it. Too. All right, y'all. We'll get back with you.